Hello and welcome. Now, this happened about a week ago, right? At the Olympics opening ceremony. And I didn't say anything about it because there were plenty of people talking and I didn't want to get dragged into this. But when this central figure here, this Barbara Butch, decided to, you know, sue people who were calling her out on her bad behavior, well, I did this. This masterpiece, right? Because I've used sarcasm, wit and mockery as weapons ever since I was a child. And you'll see as the video progresses why. Now, in my hurt and anger, I wanted to decimate, demolish and dehumanize this person for mocking my lord because I was hurt about it. So, of course, as you can see here, I created this. I uploaded a video uh, and, of course, Jabba the Hutt from Star Wars played the starring role and I was pretty I was pretty happy about this because I was like she deserves it then by the time the video reached about a hundred views or so it had a massive number of likes compared to the number of views okay I heard my lord's still and gentle voice say take it down and I said why lord you saw how they mocked you. And again the voice came, take it down. This time it was a command, not a suggestion. And I was upset. I said, Lord, why are you supporting these degenerates? Like why? And he said again, he's always so gentle, so calm and so soft spoken. He said, they are not degenerates. They have been blinded. By the adversary. I was still sitting on the fence but then he said tell all my children who are called by my name as in Christians your job is to bring people to me not to push them away. So I was still not convinced. Then the Lord he just pulled me out of you know in my spirit form and he put me into this person, the person I was dehumanizing, he put me into her mind when she was a child. And what did I see? I saw a little, a little girl, okay, a little girl, very cheerful, happy, loving, kind, generous. And then I saw her growing up and she was being attacked. She was being, you know, she was rejected, mocked ridiculed, hurt, heartbroken, and surrounded by darkness. And the Lord said, and in that darkness, the adversary got to her. He was trying to explain this to me. That is when he played his tune and entered her life with his lies, for he is the father of lies. Now, you know the vision that came to me was this. I'll just move this up and I'll show you. So I see this figure, okay, this is the closest thing I could find on the net that sort of replays the vision, all right, of what he showed me. He showed me this mystical man sort of playing a tune and mesmerizing, enchanting all these creatures, okay, in this case rats, because this is the Pied Piper of Hamelin that I found on the net, right? And he was playing this enchanting tune of, you know, it's all about love and inclusion and immediately I knew what the Lord was showing me, this whole LGBTQ thing, right? This whole movement. So it is this enchanter who is playing this tune of all love and inclusion and oh, everything is allowed, there is no sin, okay, acceptance, inclusion, and yet he promotes every kind of sexual sin and leads these people to death and destruction the way the Pied Piper of Hamelin led all the rats to drown in the river. There is one, uh, there's one story that says he took them to the cliff and dropped them off. You know, they all fell off the cliff and drowned and, dr and died. So I was just thinking and I was seeing this, I'm seeing this and I'm seeing that this person, these people who were at that table mocking the Lord, they're all under the spell of this adversary. 
Satan, who's playing such an enchanting tune to them that because they're, they all come from this place of childhood trauma, like most people do in the world today, right? And Satan plays them this tune and he leads them, showing them, you know, taking them up the garden path and then dropping them into the void, to death and destruction, all in the name of love and inclusion. And they don't understand what they're getting into because they're so blinded by his, you know, by the Pied Piper's music. So anyway, so this is what the Lord said, that that is when he played his tune and entered her life with lies, for he is the father of lies. He also told me this. Remember, he brought me back to my own childhood. Remember when as a helpless child you felt as though you had been forsaken and there was no love. And that was true because from the age of four, you see my parents, and I've, I've mentioned this before, they were both doctors, but I haven't told you the real story that they were completely morally degenerate. They didn't, they didn't know Christ. So they both committed serial adultery and that of course led to divorce. And that's when my childhood trauma started at the age of four, when the severe beatings started. And it was tremendous trauma. There was, there was a lot of physical beatings. And then my mother decided to get married when I was 10. And from 10 to 18, my childhood was nightmarish. Uh, so nightmarish that I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Okay, talk about not just severe beatings, but mental abuse, violent verbal humiliation, and all this while they're being sugary sweet to me in front of people, other people. When people come to visit, they're all sugary sweet. Nobody has a clue what's going on behind closed doors. And it was the worst. It was hell on earth for me. So I know childhood trauma. I know, I know what it's like. This is just, I wanted to share this view. And the only thing that healed it was the love of the Lord and was the forgiveness he taught me. He showed me, he took me into her childhood and showed me that. He brought me to my childhood and showed me that you too were surrounded by pain, hate, anger, fear, and darkness. The adversary always attacks through trauma, especially childhood trauma. So I asked the Lord, then why do you allow such trauma, Lord? Why? And then I got one of the most profound answers I have ever heard from him because I was genuinely asking, like, why? It leads to so much pain in this world. Why do you allow childhood trauma like this? So he showed me the world with 8 plus billion people on it, 8 plus billion souls on it right now. And he showed me from all the way from starting from Japan where the sun rises Australia, Japan, Southeast Asia, India, moving on to the Middle East, you know, and then Russia, and then Africa, Europe, North America, South America. He showed me the whole world and he showed me, I could see with through his eyes, 8 billion plus people. And he told me, every soul that comes into this fallen world, this earth, faces challenges. So from childhood, we face challenges. He also said every soul comes with preordained free will. Every soul can choose after they face the challenges. Every soul can choose to hurt or heal themselves. So, you know, we hear of so many people hurting themselves, self-inflicting wounds, or even to the point of self-destruction, you know, committing suicide because they can't deal with the pain and the challenges. So the Lord said every soul can choose to hurt or heal themselves. And then every soul can choose to hurt or heal others. So as a, as a victim of childhood trauma, you can grow up to either be the opposite parent of your own parents, or you can choose to be equally abusive and hurt your own children, right? Because there's always a trauma cycle in these uh, cases. So Every soul can choose to hurt or heal themselves. Every soul can choose to hurt or heal others, right? Then he said, there are consequences for each choice you make. I cannot interfere in your choice, but I can guide you if you will listen. This is the Lord speaking, right? 
and he said to me those who choose to hurt others especially children will face the most unimaginable consequences and then a verse was dropped into my head and it was this luke 17:2 it's also then matthew 18:6 Previously, I'd interpreted it differently to mean that, you know, anyone who uh, sort of, you know, takes away young Christians, you know, from their faith will be dealt with. But he meant children, hurting children. The verse goes like, it would be better to be thrown into the sea with a millstone hung around your neck than to cause one of these little ones to fall into sin. Today, I see this verse in a new light. because of this lgbtq you know agenda that's happening i believe that people who are causing little ones to fall into sin okay this whole confusion gender confusion sexual sin it's rampant today there are children as young as 11 and 12 being introduced to this and even younger at kindergarten they are being taught about all kinds of sexual sins and you know con- confusion gender confusion so This is what this verse also means. You know there are many multiple dimensions to every verse in the Bible. This is one dimension to this verse and the one in Matthew 18:6. So I understood and I said so what should I do now? And the Lord was very clear. He said take down the video and make a new one on forgiveness. Because the only way to overcome the darkness in this world is through the light of forgiveness. through me through jesus i am love loving me means forgiving everyone i repeat that he said loving me means forgiving everyone hate malice and mockery are the adversary's tools not mine amazing message and then another verse was dropped into my head Ephesians 4:31 where Paul says let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice that is along with all malice and you know i had created that video chaba the hut with a lot of malice yes there was wit and sarcasm but there was malice and be a kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ sake hath forgiven you so interesting then i heard the voice the gentle still beautiful voice of the lord the soft voice he said again tell all my children who are called by my name christians your job is to bring people to me not to push them away and you know when when the lord says something twice it's important you cannot use the adversary's tools to bring anyone to me when you mock with malice you make it that much more difficult to bring these people to me they are my children too they are simply blinded by my enemy i love them as much as i love you and i was like yeah right you love jabba the hut as much as you love me ha 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 and then he rebuked me He said always remember I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance as Luke 5:32 Always remember I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance and you know what Paul says in Romans 3:10 there's not one righteous no not one So this whole thing I had about oh so you love Jabba the Hutt more than me backfired <laughs> because the Lord always uses scripture to rebuke even his own children so to forgive all childhood trauma and overcome now what do you do when you just cannot forgive someone this is something i asked the lord and this is his answer he said the most dangerous type of unforgiveness the most dangerous type of unforgiven for unforgiveness is when you are justified in your unforgiveness sorry that's that's my little teacup my little dog bless you the most dangerous kind of unforgiveness is when you feel you're justified in your unforgiveness like a child who has been abused who has been beaten who has been tortured mentally verbally in every way okay 
that is the most justified form of unforgiveness and the lord said that is the most dangerous form of unforgiveness then again another verse dropped into my head and that was matthew 6:14 for if you forgive other people when they sin against you your heavenly father will also forgive you that's in the lord's prayer too right like our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others who trespass against us that is there even in the lord's prayer so sorry tika i want to come here tika come here come you want to say hello to everyone she's she's very old now she's 15 years old and that is about 105 in human years right yes yes you want to do the video with me okay you want to go down okay sorry about that but she's my baby she's 15 years old in human years and i mean in dog years and uh, wait what <laughs> okay she's 105 years old in human years because one year is seven years for a dog right okay so here's what the message is for today's video even though you love the lord and you've literally tried everything and i mean everything every prayer in the book but the sadness and hate just sits like a rock upon your heart okay because there are things sometimes that we cannot forgive you know i know mothers who have lost their children to drunk drivers how do you forgive that mothers who have you know mothers and fathers why why take out the fathers mothers and fathers who have seen their children be lured into you know drugs who have seen their own children commit suicide how do you forgive the darkness how do you forgive it okay because that sadness and hate mostly sadness and a lot of hate sits like a rock upon your heart right so i am going to share with you this profound message today and this is something that the lord took me through many years ago when i had to forgive my own mother and father for the kind of childhood they gave me and of course every kind of step right step father step mother step sister you you name it step uncle step this step that i've had them all right so i'm going to share something that worked as a miracle of forgiveness for me and it's a short statement of fact a prayer or affirmation and it goes like this oh but there's just one condition for this to work and that is you have to first ask yourself how much do i really love the lord once you come to the conclusion that i love the lord more than anything else in this world then say this statement out loud and this is the powerful powerful prayer this is what worked for me i said out loud because i love my lord so much and he has asked me to forgive everyone and because my love for him is more powerful than my hate for you because you know be honest you do hate that person if you've still not forgiven them there is a you know love and hate are the are two sides of the same coin as it said so you must be honest so this says and because my love for him for my lord is more powerful than my hate for you and then say the person's name say both the names okay like john doe or jane doe or whatever i forgive you john doe in his mighty name so i'll repeat this because i love my lord so much and he has asked me to forgive everyone and because my love for him is more powerful than my hate for you i forgive you so and so in his mighty name and see the miracle and then you seal this declaration where you use the name of the person and you forgiven them and out loud right you're saying it out loud 
you don't have to go in front of the person and do this. Just do it in your prayer closet. Do it in your space. Keep that person in mind and do it. And then seal this declaration with this blessing in Aramaic. La Alam, Almin, Amen. So La Alam, Almin means now and ever unto ages of ages. Amen. Right? So what you're doing is you're sealing this blessing so that this um, unforgiveness cannot come back and sit like a stone on your heart ever again. You're sealing it. And when you do it in Aramaic, something very powerful happens to seal that. So you can never go back and become unforgiving towards the person that you've made this declaration to. You know, it's it's a very beautiful, beautiful prayer. And it has worked for me. And then, of course, there's forgive, rejoice and be glad. Because that heart of stone, because it's a heavy feeling of darkness when you can't forgive someone, right? That heart of stone will get will crack up and the Lord will replace it with a tender heart, with a tender loving heart. And that means total freedom, freedom total intense freedom, sudden freedom, like birds flying, you know, <laughs> birds flying and, you know, into the light. And it's total freedom from darkness and from the wiles of Satan, from the wiles of the adversary. Because unforgiveness can more often open gates to something much worse. You know, all kinds of, uh, um, all kinds of traumatic things. And it can open the gates to Satan and his demons to come in and put more things into your head, right? So forgiveness is the key, which is why the Lord has, which is why it's there in the Lord's Prayer. And the Lord himself said that forgive others because your heavenly Father has forgiven you. So that is the message. I believe it was a very profound message. I felt it very profound to my soul. Now, I had forgiven a lot of people, uh, you know, in my own life. You know, for everything that happened in my childhood, I had to forgive many people. And uh, I'm sure I gave them reason that they need to forgive me too. But all said and done, our freedom comes when we break the chains of our own unforgiveness, right? So for our freedom, this really, really works. Now, because that happened at the Olympics and I was not able to forgive this person, Barbara Birch, and all the people, you know, who orchestrated this, she's not alone, right? There were, I'm sure hundreds of people worked behind the scenes to orchestrate this mockery of the Lord, right? I had to forgive all over again. And the Lord showed me how, not through sarcasm and mockery, but I have to, we have to forgive from within. So I hope this video helped you. If it did, and if you face childhood trauma of your own, try this. Please, please do try this, okay? This is a beautiful prayer and it overcomes any kind of trauma. All right, whether it's childhood trauma or adult trauma or anything that you may be, that may be sitting like a stone upon your heart that you can't get rid of, try this and come back and tell me how it's worked for you. So if you love the Lord, that's it. You'll be free. He'll free you. In his name, you will be free. Okay. So I'm going to say bye now. And I would like all of you to forgive my last video along with the one it was intended for, you know, all that sarcasm and mockery. And this, please forgive Jafar my masterpiece. Yeah, I'm a Star Wars fan. And this is the first thing that came to my mind. You know, this masterpiece of art using digital art and AI. Please forgive this, right? And stay blessed in the Lord. I'll say bye now. Goodbye. God bless.